Hey guys, Forex here, hope you're all well. What you're looking at in front of you is the PlayStation I repaired in a previous video. No, there's nothing wrong with it, it's still working perfectly fine. I just want to do a follow on video. Now there's three things I want to do to this PlayStation. Uh, the first thing I want to do is recalibrate the laser in this system. Now because this system is reading CDRs perfectly fine, what I want to do is lower the power that's going to the laser and, and still see if I can keep it reading CDRs because if I can lower the power and, and still get it to read CDRs obviously because there's not a lot of power going through that there used to be I'm going to extend the life of the laser so that's one thing I'm going to do the second thing I'm going to do I'm going to replace the old four wire mod chip that's in there now I want to get rid of that because if you put any uh, game in here that's got mod chip protection in it um, that mod chip protection is going to find that mod chip straight away. The old four wire is uh, it's pretty crap. So I'm going to put a Myomi 4 Stealth 4 in this thing, and uh, yeah, that should bypass any mod protection that's out there. Now, the third thing and final thing I want to do is CSync mod uh, this system. Um, but when I do a CSync mod, I install a switch, and that enables me to switch between composite video for sync over RGB or CSync for sync over RGB. So yeah, if you give me five minutes to set up, I'll crack on with those three things. So okay, what I've decided to do first is calibrate the laser um, on this PlayStation. Um, now I can do that because obviously it's got a mod chip in it. Normally you would have to mod chip first before you could boot a CDR, but um, it's already got a mod chip in it. I'm gonna be replacing this one for a stealth version anyway. Um, but yeah, I just want to get that out of the way. I want to get the laser calibrated. So when I mod chip it, I just put it all back together and we're ready to go. Um, now I'm going to do the calibration off camera. Um, but don't worry, I'll, I'll come back and show you how I did it. And I'll show you the eye pattern on the scope as well. So yeah, I'm going to crack on with that. So okay guys, I've just spent the last 10 minutes calibrating this laser. It's all calibrated. It's all working fine as you can see play Metal Gear Solid it's not skipped once um, it's absolutely fine um, let me explain what I did um, now because this was reading CDRs perfectly fine um, the way I do this if you get a system like this that is reading CDRs perfectly fine what I do is I back off the power to the laser now that may sound a bit strange why are you lowering the power to the laser don't you increase it uh, not when the system's reading CDR is perfectly fine to begin with. Um, what I tend to do when you've got a system that's reading CDR is okay, is I will come in the side. I can, don't know if you can see um, if I can get in there. I might be able to lift it up and show you. Can you see that little adjustment there? That's the power calibration to the to the actual laser. Now the way. I do this when I've got a system that's reading CDRs fine is I'll come into the side and I'll actually keep turning the power down until I start to see physical distress like the system is starting to struggle to read the CDR and I'm starting to get skips on the video now what I'll do then is I'll come along with my scope and I will take a look at the RF signal which is there and I'll look at it on my scope like this. Now, when I did that, I got down to 700 millivolts. Now, that's a baseline. That's where I start, that's 700 millivolts, because that's where it's starting to, to struggle now. So what I did after that was I bumped it up to 750. I turned the power up like this to 750. Once I got to 750, it started to read CDRs perfectly fine again. So I was like, oh, well, okay, let's round it off. I'll go to 800, that'll give me a nice buffer. You know, if I get it like a crap disc or something like that, I've got a little bit of leeway there then. And that's what I'm at now, I'm at 800. Now if I measure the RF signal again, and we can see that we're at 200 millivolts per division. So if you count the squares, that's two, four, six, eight. So that's 800 millivolts. And this thing is reading CDRs fine at that. 
Now I know for a fact that I've turned down the power on this laser um, because I actually know I went further downwards than I did to uh, go back up for it to get to read CDR. So doing that I probably extended the life of the laser because obviously it's not pushing so much power through it now. And yeah, it's working absolutely fine. So yeah, that's the laser calibrated. So okay, that's the laser calibrated. Um, it's actually a, a pretty damn fine laser. To get a, a laser to read CDRs at 800 millivolts is actually pretty damn good. Normally you have to push it up near the 900 to 1 volt mark. But this one was reading CDRs perfectly at 800 millivolts. So yeah, anyway, what I'm going to do now is replace this old 4 wire mod chip. Um, I'm not going to film that guys, I've already got a, a YouTube video where I install a mod chip. But first I need to strip this down and get to that motherboard so I can get in there and start ripping the old chip out and putting the new Myomi 4 slash Stealth 4 mod chip in there. So yeah, I'll crack on with that. So okay, the next thing I need to do is get this metal shield off. <laughs> I remember this back in the day. Sony tried to claim this was to stop RF emissions. Um, but yeah, that's total b guys. Um, because if you think about it, you've got this so-called RF shield, and then on top of it, you've got the metal shield that the laser block sits on. So you've got two shields. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sony put that on there to stop people trying to mod their system. Um, trying to claim it was for RF is total b so yeah, I need to get that off and you can see it's basically soldered onto the, the board. So yeah, I'm going to take my soldering iron and just take off that shield. Okay, that's the shield removed. Um, best place for this bin. It's not needed. Um, if we take a look, we can see the, the old four wire mod chip in all its glory. Um, there's actually three wires coming off the chip. Um, but the reason it's called a four wire because there's one here as well. Um, so yeah, what I'm going to do now is just take that off the board, get rid of that because I'm going to install the Stealth 4 uh, slash Myomi 4, which is a lot better. Um, so yeah, I'm going to crack on with that. Let you look what that looks like once I've done. Okay, that's the old four wire mod chip removed. As you can see, it came out pretty easily. What I need to do now is install the new Stealth 4 Miami 4 and I'll crack on with that. As you can see, the new Stealth 4 slash Miami 4 has been installed. Um, it's not my need to work guys, but it's you know it's not like I'm trying to win a competition here. <laughs> yeah. So uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get this partially back together now because uh, I'll explain why I'm going to only partially put it back together. Um, I just want to see if the mod chip uh, has been installed successfully and we get a, a boot with a CDR. So yeah, I'm just going to put this partially back together and we can give it a quick test. Okay, we're partially back together, just enough to give the system a quick test. I have a cotton bud in the lid reset. Uh, top tip for you there, <laughs> you saw that in my previous video. Um, so let's give the system a test see if it boots. Let's power on. I've got Metal Gear Solid in there. And um, we've got spin up. And um, we're booting. So that's a successful mod chip install. That looks fine. So okay, we power it off and stop that. Now the reason I only put it partially back together because there's a, a another mod I want to do on this system. Um, let me just get my tweezers and uh, remove the 
um, cotton bud because I don't want the system to start up. What I want to show you is what I'm going to try and remove with a simple mod. If I power on, I want you to look at the PlayStation logo. And can you see like a, a cross hatch pattern? That's called dot crawl. And that happens when you use composite video for sync over RGB. And you can see it. Can you see it here? It's like a, it's crawling upwards. You can see it crawling upwards. Now what I'm going to do now uh, to get rid of that is a simple C-Sync mod. Um, and that will uh, send composite sync uh, over the scar and, and eliminate this uh, horrible uh, dot crawl you get with composite video. Now when I do my C-Sync mods, I add a switch. Um, because uh, you can't have both um, so what I tend to do is add a switch where you can select between composite video for sync or c-sync for sync so yeah I'm gonna strip this down again that's why I need partially put it back together and I'm gonna carry out that mod now I've already done a video on how you c-sync a PlayStation so I'm not gonna you know sit there and, and talk you all the way through it um, but what I'll do is I'll, I'll crack on with it and show you once it's done. So okay, I have everything ready to perform the C-Sync mod on the motherboard. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and do that and then I'll come back and explain what everything is. So okay, what I want to show you now is where I'm up to because I'm going to start putting the board back in the case and obviously I need to show you now before I put it in there otherwise you won't be able to see it. So. The first thing I want to show you is where I disabled the old composite video signal. If you look here, it, go, it comes along and goes up here to the third pin on this connector. And if you can just see there where I've just nicked the trace, so that's disabled uh, composite video going to that pin. Now, if we look uh, we have a wire now this is my signal wire um, that's going to the center of the switch on the left hand side of the switch will be c-sync this is c-sync here now if I turn it over I'll show you where I tapped back into composite video so the right side of the wire sorry the switch will be coming from here and that's uh, composite video and obviously the switch and the rest of the gubbins is going to be wired onto this so then I'll be able to switch between composite video for sync or c-sync for sync so okay I've cut the hole I've um, installed the switch just got to get the rest of it wired in now so okay that's the c-sync mod all taken care of got a nice little switch so I can switch between composite video for sync or C-Sync for sync. Um, you can see the 220 microfarad electrolytic capacitor. That's to kill off any DC offset on the C-Sync line. And you can see a, just a, I don't know if you can see it there, there's, there's a 480 ohm resistor. Um, that just combines with the 75 ohm resistor inside the TV. That creates a voltage divider and that brings the uh, C-Sync down to a level that the the TV will recognize so okay what I'm about to do is power on and show you the difference so this should still be in composite video mode so if I power on yeah and I've changed the LED light as well we should see all that dot crawl that yeah, you can see it there you see it moving upwards absolutely horrible um, so what I'm going to do now is power off I'm going to flick the switch now that's C-Sync mode and power on and you'll see the difference and there you go it's completely gone looking beautiful if we look at the memory card and CD player logo there's none of that dot crawl there now you can flick the switch in, in, real, in real time what I'll do is I'll flick the switch and go back to the composite video and you'll see that dot crawl come back there it is you can see it it's horrible now I'm gonna flip the switch again and we'll go back to C-Sync 
and there we go disappeared gone so yeah that's the c-sync mod i do on playstations now what i'm going to do now is get this all back together and we should be able to give it a final test yay <laughs> so okay before i forget i just want to confirm um, i managed to read the code off the old mod chip now if you remember uh, someone had cut the legs down on this thing um, so what I had to do was put it in a Dell socket and solder new um, off cuts of resistor legs to the side of the chip and then I could put it in the Dell socket um, but yeah anyway um, I've dumped the code off this thing and I can confirm it's the old 4 wire mod chip now also what I like looking at is you look at the date code on this thing 48th week of 98 yeah it don't get any more retro mod chip than that <laughs> the old 4 wire so okay we're all back together ready to give the system a test I have my backup version of Metal Gear Solid in there um, I want to show you something before I start off the PlayStation there you go I own the original um, this is the US version um, I imported this day one when it came out so yeah uh, before you start moaning at me for using backups I do own the original game so what I'm going to do is shut the lid and power on and we should be backup version of Metal Gear Solid And we're booting, baby. And the picture looks great. None of that horrible dot crawl. So yeah, there you go guys, hope you liked the video, please give it a big thumbs up, like, comment, subscribe, all the usual stuff, and as always, I'll catch you on the next one. It's Metal Gear Solid baby. And that picture looks absolutely fantastic. Archipelago was attacked and captured by next generation special forces being led by members of Foxhound.